working on a 2012 Hyundai Sonata Limited with the rear deck 8 inch subwoofer doing the aftermarket amplifier install along with the line output converter. The install is already complete. I just want to give a rundown on some of the tips of doing it this way without replacing the factory stereo and leaving that in place. So really there's only one wire you have to run to the back and that's the power wire. So you run it through the little boot down there. And the easiest way to do that is just to um, take a, an awl or something that's got a good uh, sharp point on it and puncture the boot around the side away from the wires and then get you a old school fashioned clothes hanger, straighten it out and then poke it through the hole and then put the wire in this little groove here and then just pull it back through the boot and you'll pull your wires all the way out. You'll need to remove this kick panel down here. Um, there's just one little attachment down here at the bottom, a little plug you pull out with your trim tool and then pop your hood latch up and it'll pull out. Then this rubber boot here you can start to pull off. Um, use your trim tool pieces here. Just run them under here and pop it up and there's just clips that pop up. Not a big deal at all. Then you'll come over here and when this is off you'll pull this trim piece just out and this gives you enough room to pop out to run the wiring right down through here. Then you'll carry it on back through here. Same thing, this just pops up with your trim tool, a couple of clips, and then you'll run it back behind the seat back here. With the seat down, I found it was handy to use this coat hanger again. Run it down under the fabric into the crack that you'll follow down here and then you can run the wire just pull it back through like you did previously uh, using that coat hanger. It's easier to complete the rest of this if you fold both seats down so you can lay down in the trunk because you're going to have to get the wiring ran this way. Let's go look underneath there. So from under the trunk um, you've got your, your right and left wires you gotta tap into for your line output converter over here and these are if we can see them labeled positive and negative there they are so positive and negative you can do the other test where you connect a 9 volt battery and see if it goes out or not but you're gonna need to attach some jumper wires for links so when you cut them in half you're going to have to set an extra length to be able to splice in the new wiring uh, so you can get some heat shrink and melt those down. Then run over to the line output converter over here. Then your RCAs go out to the amplifier and I need to get a shorter RCA cable than what's in here. The line output converter, it's got uh, inputs for left and right channel. Just make sure you know which ones are which when you follow them from the speaker. And then the directions have some information about the clipping and output level and turn on mode. So you just have to figure out what you need. But as far as the remote wire, uh, typically an amplifier from the re, uh, aftermarket stereo needs a remote wire around. But this actually runs a remote signal, remote out, to your amplifier. So you don't need to run an actual wire from the front to the back for this because it'll take care of it. Now these two items, uh, they're just screwed into the carpet and that thing's pretty small, about the size of a deck of cards or so. And the amplifier here, amplifier here uh, there's one bolt up there that actually is screwed into the metal frame. The other two uh, are just simply plugged or screwed into the carpet. It seems to be holding fine. The subwoofer is a custom fiberglass enclosure that I, I made. It took about three days, a um, couple hundred dollars worth of materials and my car still smells like uh, glue, just the fiberglass resin. Um, it's been a few days now, but it's pretty strong. I wanted to keep access to my cargo trunk liner, so I did do 
a cutout on the box itself so that that would still attach when we did that. And I just, there's no way I was going to be able to videotape that process. It's a three day deal overall. Um, but there's plenty of videos out there. So overall, and that, so here's what I used. The JL setup, the line output converter, LOC 22. Uh, standard amp kit from Walmart, but really uh, the RCAs are too long for this because I only need like a foot and a half. Um, I don't need the remote wire, so really all you need is a power wire with a fuse and everything else you'll have. Um, the JD500 amp and then the 10W0V3 uh, JL Audio 10 inch subwoofer. Overall the project wasn't bad. Uh, being up under here and having her wire all these was kind of a pain. Uh, you just got to make sure that you leave yourself enough length to tap into them. Overall, not bad. I will say that my primary uh, concern for the size of the box was just I wanted to keep my trunk space. So if that box was a little bit bigger, it'd have a little better bass tones to it. Uh, but I kept it pretty small just to fit in the space. But it does sound good for what it is. So if you like the setup, uh, all of the jail information is right here. And I think overall, the subwoofer was 149 I think. The amplifier was 249 The amp kit's 20 bucks, And the line output converter was 100 bucks.